you know, trying to be formal. Hey, like, guys, one thing you want to do is like cut through that formal bullshit as early on as possible. And the quicker you can just be real with the girl and get her to be herself, the better. The, the longer you have this bullshit front facade, Mr. Formal Romantic Man, the harder it's going to be to get with this woman. Okay. A couple things about the date itself, guys. Keep in mind when you're kind of planning your dates out. Me personally, I have two or three go-to dates that I run. I don't have a huge catalog of dates that I do. I just do two different dates and I get very good at running that specific date because it's a very similar routine. And every time I'm going on a date with a girl, it's the same routine. I think this is very important for you guys because it it's easy. You don't want to have a brand new experience every time and then you're you're the girl's giving you new objections because you're trying to take her to a different spot. When you can run the same date every time, it's more likely that you're going to hear the same objections and the escalation is going to go down the same way and it just becomes very routine. And the less you have to think about all of that shit, the more you can actually put into focusing on the girl in the moment, okay? So you don't want to be too in your head about all of that stuff. Try to develop a nice, easy routine that incorporates all the theory that I'm discussing tonight and do that date over and over and over and just keep running girls through that same date, okay? And you'll get very good at running it, a first date. So a couple things about the first date. Low investment, meaning it needs to be low investment on both of our ends. That way, it's not a big deal. Like if I, I live like an hour and a half from New York City, if I told the girl, hey, I want to take you on a you know, five-star dinner to New York City, and it's probably going to be like a $500 meal, I'm going to drive us there in a limo, this and that, you want to avoid all of that. It should be something so small and such little investment because the lower the investment it is, the less big of a deal it is, the less pressure there is on the girl. And also, the less pressure she feels like, I mean, why would this guy be spending so much money on me if he doesn't even fucking know me? It's the first date, okay? So you don't want to be doing any of that shit, guys. When do you take the girl on like a really nice dinner date? Later on, when things are already going smoothly. And honestly, I feel like she deserves it. Low investment, inexpensive, low pressure. That's what the first date is every time, okay? I don't recommend spending a lot of money. That doesn't mean you don't spend any money, but you know, it depends on your financial situation. When I was a little bit cheaper and more broke, my dates were pretty much zero dollars. That's cool. Right now, I don't mind spending 50 bucks on a date, you know, because I'm at a point where I'm only dating women that are of a certain caliber, okay? If you're just getting good at this and you're starting to practice, I, re I recommend you date pretty frequently because the first couple of times you go on a date, you're going to be fucking nervous. You're going to be fucking nervous. I remember me personally, like four or five years ago, I have distinct memories of like girls coming to my house and I'm fucking walking around the house, like panting around the house, like nervous as fuck. Like, I just remember being nervous knowing that there was like an attractive girl on her way to my house. I don't know why. I guess it was because I was inexperienced and I didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. But I remember being nervous about that shit. It's at a point now where I just went on probably the hottest date I've ever been on, maybe like three months ago. And I wasn't nervous at all. Literally, I was picking her up like she was nervous. And, uh, ironically enough, the girl was I could tell she was nervous when she got in the car. And it's just so rel relieving once you've gotten to a point where you're just like, there's, not, there's nothing to worry about because I've gone through it so many times, okay? So that's what I want you guys to do. Start going on dates. If you go out and you get a girl's number, even if you don't think she's that attractive and you're like, ah, I just got the number, but like, I don't know if I would date her. Dude, go on the fucking date. Go out and learn something. Honestly, honestly, you don't need to marry that girl. You don't need to marry that girl, but you will learn something in the process that you can apply to the hotter girl later on. If I didn't ever date any of those mediocre looking women, I wouldn't have been able to date the really hot girl, okay? So don't wait until the fucking smoking hot girl comes along to finally go on a date, you know what I'm saying? The same thing with approaching when you're out, like approach girls, even if you're not that attracted to them because you never know who's that next hottest girl that's gonna walk in your life and you'll be glad that you've already ran the date several times, okay? So a couple of different date ideas. Again, cheap, inexpensive, low investment, low pressure, either Doing an activity at your house, doing an activity at the girl's house, doing an activity nearby your house um, is ideal. 
So for me, what are a couple things I like to do? I already told you, ideally she comes here. If she doesn't come here, ideally we're walking my dog at this park nearby my house. I, there's, there's a nice lake that is right down the street from me that um, there's like a wide open area with a beach and a little outdoor bar. I like to go over there, bring my dog during sunset, walk the dog with the, with the sun setting over the lake sit down by the beach area a little bit, walk over to the bar, sit my dog on the outdoor patio over there and get a drink with the girl I'm with while you know we're just sitting out watching the sunset with the dog. And since I brought the dog, naturally the next step would be to go back to my house because I have to bring the dog home at some point. So simple, low investment, nice date because beautiful scenery, we can walk around. There's several different locations at the place. And I'm kind of like, the tour guide of the area. If you think about it, I'm like showing her around. I'm leading her. I'm talking about the area. There's a lot of shit to talk about because it's a nice view. There's a beach. There's, there's this nice little bar. My dog's there. There's a bunch of different locations we're going to be at within that area. So it's constantly changing. Like we're not just in one fucking spot the entire time. We're bouncing around, st staying at different areas, for like 15 minutes at a time. And then also there's just a lot of shit to talk about in the area, okay? So that's that's one date I like to do. That's kind of low pressure. Sometimes you'll get to a point where the girl just isn't comfortable doing that even, and she just prefers we meet out somewhere. Kind of rare, but it happens. Um, if that's the case, and I and I really want to see this girl, I'll I'll go out and do that, okay? Sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta just do that first date to get it out of the way. And then typically the follow up to that would be the girl coming to my house. Cause the reason she's not coming straight to my house is she's just not comfortable enough with me. And if that's the case, cool. I'll go out for a little bit, build a little bit more comfort connection, spiking the attraction throughout. And then the next time we meet up, we'll probably be at my house or at her house. And I'll find a way to do that. We're not just going to go hang out at my house. Just like how you're, when you're going for the pool and all these other things, you're going to the house to do an activity, whether that's cooking, smoking hookah, playing with my dog, walking my dog near my house, um, smoking weed, like whatever you guys are into. If she's like into massages and stuff, we talk about massages. If she's into music, we're talking about listening to music. If there's a cool movie that I w I've been wanting to show her, it's the movie. If it, you could see all these different activities are activities that are going on at the house. You know, I have a basketball court in my backyard. I have a trampoline in my backyard. I have nice little wood area that I walk through and hike sometimes in the backyard, a lot of different activities going on in my house. Um, so those are a couple different date ideas. I don't, based on where you guys live, you're going to have to figure out some scenarios that are near your house that are cheap, inexpensive ideas you could do, or worst case scenario, you go out and get a drink with the girl. That's another very simple, socially acceptable idea to do for a date. That's not that expensive. You probably end up spending 20 bucks, 30 bucks at the most. Couple things to uh, mention. When the date starts, I'm pretty low energy. Lower energy than you guys would expect because there's no fucking rush, man. Like, don't feel the need and don't feel the pressure to be like running this amazing date because when you do that, ironically, it comes off somewhat try hard and, and she can see that you're like in your head about making sure it's a good date. And as opposed to when she comes through and I'm just like, hey, what's up? Yeah, come on in. And I'm just chilling and I'm not even trying to keep the conversation going. And I'm just completely relaxed. I may even be like finishing up some work at the moment. I was like, hey, come on in. I'm, I'm just finishing this up. Or come on in. Yeah, I'm still cooking. And I'll just have her like playing with the dog in the background. And like, I'm not even talking that much. I'm almost letting her start to run the conversation. I want her to be participating. Okay. By you trying to hold the conversation the whole time, you're actually failing to let her participate. Pull back a little bit in the beginning. Start it off slow and let her contribute to get the conversational vibe building, okay? Unless it's really awkward. If I feel like she's just being awkward, I'll start having conversation. I'm not just going to sit in silence for 10 minutes and be like, let's go, bitch. Start talking. You know, it's, it's not like that. But, you know, give her an opportunity. And also, the other reason I started as low energy is that once I start kicking up the intensity, it feels like it's progressing. You know, if I start very high energy, I actually have to maintain that energy the entire time just for it to feel the same way. Because a girl, she typically goes by how she's feeling 
moment to moment basis. Meaning, is she feeling better than she was like 10 minutes ago? Is she feeling better than she was five minutes ago or 30 minutes ago? So as long as the vibe starts down here and it just slowly starts amping up and amping up and amping up, it's easier to go that way as opposed to starting off high energy. You know, so start it off, be relaxed. No pressure on the girl. We're just chilling, okay? Something to keep in mind at the beginning of the date. Another thing is wherever you guys are meeting out, find a way to sit next to her. Try to avoid sitting across the table from her. I, I fucking hate that, dude. I hate that because it puts the fucking, puts the date into this interview type mode where it's like, so tell me about yourself. Oh, so what do you do? And it, literally you're sitting across, you know, trying to be formal. And like, guys, one thing you want to do is like cut through that formal bullshit as early on as possible. And the quicker you can just be real with the girl and get her to be herself, the better. The, the longer you have this bullshit front facade, Mr. Formal Romantic Man, the harder it's going to be to get with this woman, okay? The quicker she can sit down with me. Uh, yeah, and, and what he said, you can't touch her if you're sitting across from her either. So that's a reason... If we're sitting at a square table, at the very least, I'm going to just tell her, sit, sit next to me. Even if she can't sit right next to me, I'm going to have her sit at the adjacent spot on the table, okay? And oftentimes, you need to actively bring that up. So I'll give you one example. I went on a date with this girl. I drove to her house, actually, and picked her up. We went to go get drinks near her house. We get to the, to the venue, which is a nice little outdoor. It's, a, it's an indoor bar with, an out, with outdoor seating, and there's a fire pit as well like nearby and the fire pit wasn't turned on yet i wanted to sit at the fire pit because obviously the seating is all right next to each other so if we're sitting at the fire pit or if we're sitting at the bar we're naturally going to be sitting right next to each other that's the position that you want to be in. okay you don't want to be across from her but the fire pit wasn't on yet so they sat us at these tables and she it was a double table two chairs and two chairs and she goes to sit on the other side at we haven't even sat down yet but like, as I'm getting to the table, she goes to sit on the other side. I called that shit out instantly. I was like, I was like, nah, babe. I was like, what are you doing? I was like, sit over here. I just call that shit out. Don't be afraid to do that, guys. And it's not weird as long as you don't make it a big deal. As long as you can just say that in a way that's not like, hey, like, do you want to sit over here? Like, no, it's just like, I'm laughing about, babe, babe what are you doing? I was like, yo, sit over here. That's how it needs to be. It's not a fucking big deal. It's almost like funny. And I'm just taking the lead at the whole thing. So I said that and she was like, she was like, whoa, whoa, not yet, not yet. At least let me get a glass of wine first. Cool. I want her to say that. That's cool. I'd rather that I said that and she says, let me at least get a glass of wine first. As opposed to me never saying it and she's sitting across. This is this is very important in terms of the escalation, guys, because I want my intent to be clear from the fucking beginning. I want my intent to be clear from the beginning. Because if I never say anything and I never touch her and then later on, it's just like there's this fucking drum roll building up. It's like, okay, when's it going to, when's the vibe going to, when's he going to make the move? You don't want that. You want to be escalating from the fucking very second you're with this girl. And, and the way you do that is in very small, small, small steps. And it starts with something as subtle as, what are you doing, babe? Like sit over here. No, no. What you, yeah, I want you to sit over here. There's plenty of room over here. And even if she gives me resistance and is like, whoa, whoa, let's slow down. Let me at least get a glass of wine first. Cool. All I said was I laughed. I was like, okay, all right, all right. Let the, we'll let her get her glass of wine, you know, blah, blah, blah. But at least it was known and discussed. And notice how she said, let me at least get my glass of wine first, implying that she was going to move over. So what happened was she did get the glass of wine. We started talking. And then at some point when we finished the glass, I brought up the idea that we just sit over at the fire pit. You know, I was like, I want to sit over by the fire pit. Let's go sit over by the fire pit. And it wasn't on yet. So we asked the waiter when he came back, we was like, hey, is there any way you could turn on the fire pit right now? And he was like, yeah, I'll go turn it on. He goes, he turns it on. At that point, we finished our glass. We ordered another round. And then we went and sat down at the, at the fire pit, which is nice because now it, the, the sun's going down. It's starting to get a little chilly. It was the summer. I'm sitting right next to this girl to the point where I'm pretty much touching her. Just like how if you watched game 106 and 107, I'm, I'm pretty much shoulder to shoulder with this girl at this point, which is a great position to be in, especially when there's a little bit of alcohol involved and especially because we're already on the date, okay? So this is a great position to be in. Now I can be getting physical whenever I want. I can touch her on her shoulder. I can put her, my hand on her thigh. Anytime I make a little joke, I can fucking 
push her or if she does some kind of eye roll at me or says something stupid, I, I got no problem like pushing her or getting a little physical or like she does something cute, I can fucking hug her. Um, by the way, guys, my arm is completely tattooed right now, so I can't move this arm. So if you're wondering why I'm just like doing all of this with one arm, my arm's fucking dead right now. So a couple, couple key things that I already pointed out. Cheap, low pressure, inexpensive date. Starting off the date pretty low energy, low vibe. Um, bouncing locations, meaning the date started off like we were in my car together. Then I drove us to a place. We got out there. I walked with her. We sat down at the table. Now we're at the table together talking. From the table, we moved over to the fire pit. From the fire pit, we chilled over there. And then when it was time, we got back in the car. We, now we're both back in the car. And then we drove back to her place. And then we went inside her place. So we were car, table, fire pit, car, her place. Five locations. I mean, yeah, the car's two different times. But I'm telling you, it's still a new location in, in the sequence, okay? As opposed to you're just meeting a girl somewhere and you're staying with her in that one spot. Try to find a way to move around with her, whether that's even just going from the inside of the bar to like chilling outside. Find a way that you guys can like bounce locations with the girl, okay? Sit next to her, start the physicality, start with a little bit of intent, just a little bit, okay? So I'm sitting down with her, I'm getting a little physical with her. She's a really hot girl. I'm not gonna compliment her too much, man. She knows she's fucking hot. She knows she's fucking hot. I don't need to go crazy with it. But what I do do is like, I hold really good eye contact I'm talking like we're right fucking here. So I'm holding like really good eye contact. I'm smiling with her and I'm talking just with this kind of like a, a vibe, okay? And when you can talk like this and you can communicate like this, it creates something within the girl. A along with the physicality and along with a little bit of push-pull, a little bit of teasing, a little bit of dissing. As long as all of those things are in place, man, there's gonna be a good amount of attraction. There was another thing to remember is She's already out on a date with you. She wouldn't come out on a date with you if she wasn't attracted to you, okay? So you can assume attraction on the date. Otherwise, she wouldn't be there, okay? So keep that in mind as well. Um, another thing, I'm escalating throughout the date. It's a progressive escalation. I'm not going too far into this, guys, because it's, it's really in game 106 and 107. Go back and refer to when I'm on the couch with the girl and the way I'm progressively getting closer, more physical, more flirtatious, it's just building and building and building throughout the date, okay? Another thing, I'm not waiting until the very end of the date to kiss her either, by the way. This was something I used to struggle with. I would always wait until there was this perfect moment to kiss the girl. There is never a perfect moment. There will never be a perfect moment. I promise you there will never be a perfect moment. You need to actively be escalating up till that point, okay? If you're trying to have sex with this girl, if you wait until you're saying goodbye at the end of the date, there is a 0% chance you're going to have sex with her. And I've been in that position, guys. I've been on several different dates where I never made a move. And then it was time where the girl was finally like, all right, I guess I'm going to go. And then I walk her out to the garage and we start making out. And that was our first kiss. And then she leaves. I could have kissed her like 90 minutes before that. Could have kissed her 90 minutes before that. And the vibe would have been way stronger for the rest of the date as well. Because once you kiss, it's kind of like, a mutual agreement that has been shown that we like each other. So I would like, ideally, I want to kiss this girl as soon as possible. Not that I'm rushing and pressuring her to kiss me, but like the second I see the green light, I want to go for it because it's, it's just going to strengthen the rest of the date. And the more time I have with her after we've already kissed, the better chance that I can escalate things further. Okay. So don't wait until the very end of the date to kiss her. And that really ties back to start escalating and start getting physical as early as possible. The sooner you start getting physical and break the touch barrier, and the sooner you're getting close with her, the sooner you're going to be able to kiss her. Okay? If you never do any of these things, you never show any intent, you're never push-pull or complimenting or teasing or doing any of that shit with her, it's going to be very hard to just blatantly go and kiss her. Okay? That was something I struggled with for a long time. I never showed a lot of intent with any of these girls. And then I would just wait until the end of the date and then try to escalate. And I would probably end up kissing her. And then we would go on a, a second date. And then probably the same thing would happen later on in the date. I would kiss her. And then maybe things would escalate from there. Or maybe we would have to go on a third date. And then things escalate from there. Okay? There's just no need to, to do all of that. I'm not saying you need to fuck her the first night. But the earlier you're escalating, the earlier you start getting close and physical and building a connection and kissing, 
from my experience, the, the better things will be moving forward from there. Okay. Um, so multiple locations, uh, I was already talking about paying for the bill. Do you always pay for the bill? No. Do I always split the bill? No, it depends, man. The girl that I picked up, um, I I just felt it was right that I paid the bill with this girl. Why? I don't know. I guess she was older than me. She's financially stable. She has a kid. She's like really, really fucking hot. And I didn't mind paying for the bill and I wanted to pay for the bill. You know, she, I knew she was going to be hosting me back at her house afterwards. And I just felt like it was the right thing to do in that moment. So what I did was we were on the date. We were at the fire pit. We were getting super close. We didn't kiss by the way, but we got very close and I just didn't feel like it was time to kiss her. But at one point I did get in very close and I ended up like kissing her on the cheek. And then I pulled it away. Like, like, Oh, fuck, like I gotta, I gotta calm down or we need to calm down or whatever the fuck happened. Right. But I did bring it to that point. At some point I went inside to pee. I took a piss inside and I went up to the bartender while I was inside and I was like, Hey, I'd like to pay for the bill. I paid for the bill while I went to the bathroom. So she didn't even know I paid for the bill. And then I went inside, pissed, came back out. And then we kept vibing. And at a point where it was starting to get dark out, she was like, are you ready to head back? We could go like smoke hookah. She was, she was big into hookah too. So she was like, we could go smoke hookah at my house. And I was like, cool, let's go. I got up and I, I was like, yeah, grab my arm. And she was like, oh, what about the bill? I was like, I already took care of it. Let's go. It's, it's, it doesn't seem like much, but dude, that's, I could tell that in her mind when I had already done that, that was like, a, that was like, oh, that was smooth. Like, like a nice little, like plus one, you know? Cause it was like, if you have money and, and you're coming from the right frame on the date, I don't see a, a, a problem with paying for the bill, guys. Honestly, I really don't. And it's at a point where I, I actually prefer to pay for the date. My mentality is kind of like, if I'm the man and you're out with me, I'm going to take care of you. If you're at that point, if you're literally just dating these girls for the experience and you're, you're on a budget, you know, maybe be a little bit more conservative. But that, that's my perspective on things. But I, I could tell you that when I did all that, it was a nice little plus one. I was like, yeah, just grab my mom. I was like, I already paid for it. Let's go. And I just walked her out to the car. I actually opened the car door, put her in the passenger, got back into the, into the driver. And then we drove back to her house. Um, so that was like how I picked her up, how I brought her to the date, what I did on the date. And, and by the way, conversational topics on the date, it's a lot of get to know you while sprinkling in flirtation and jokes and sexual innuendo and teasing it's all of that stuff. It, th there's not like one specific topic I talk about. You know, sometimes the girl brings up a topic. The thing is just being aware of when the topic isn't going the way you want to go and making a conscious decision to cut that conversational thread. That's what's more important. Okay. That's what's more important. So sometimes if the girl's just going on a rant, I can tell she's super passionate about something, but I could tell it's like kind of killing the vibe. I'll just cut the thread. You know, if she starts talking about, I, I don't know, let's say she starts talking about politics or some shit, I'll literally just be like, I'll, I'll, I'll find a topic within that conversation and I'll just start talking about that thing. If she's talking about like Donald Trump and he was just at his latest rally in California, I might just be like, you know what? I've actually never been to California. I thought it was like a good vacation spot. Have you ever gone out there? You see how I kind of like took the context and just got rid of the political aspect of things. And now we're talking about vacationing in Cali. So like, if you guys feel that the conversation is getting off topic and it's just irrelevant to what you guys are doing, you know, let it go for like 30 seconds, but at a certain point, just cut the thread if you want to keep the vibe going the way you want it going. Okay. Um, so actually let's keep going with this one date example. And then I'll show you guys a couple different date examples. What happened after that? I got into the car. We hadn't kissed at this point. We just got pretty close and there was a good vibe at the, uh, at the bar. And, and then again, we discussed smoking hookah back at her house. And obviously, since she invited me, it's a good sign of interest. So, <laughs> you know, we go back to her house. I park the car. We go inside. I'm just chill, man. I'm not in some fucking rush to fuck this girl, okay? I picked her up at like 7.15, and now it's like 9.30 p.m., and we're back at her house, okay? I'm just chilling, man. There's no fucking rush. No rush. We get back to her house. She starts up. We're in the kitchen. We're setting up the hookah. I'm being a little touchy, a little teasy, a little joking around with her while, you know, we're playing, we're, we're setting up the hookah and stuff, but I'm still, I'm just in this playful, teasing, fun, flirty kind of a vibe. Okay. That's the vibe you want to have on this thing. It's not super serious. It's not. So, you know, what is, what, what are some characteristics that you, that you would like in a boyfriend? You don't need to be talking about that shit, man. Do you see how serious that is? 
It's not that ever, ever. I'm never saying that ever. It's just this light teasing, joking vibe, you know? Um, so we set up the hookah. We, we, we go over to the couch. We bring the hookah over to the couch. We're sitting on the couch. She's sitting pretty far away from me. And again, at one point I was like, yo, can you come sit over here? She's like, what? I was like, yes. Can you, you come sit over here? I want you to sit over here. I want you to sit next to me. Right. And there's, there, there's, there's no shame in saying that to the girl. I'm telling you, it's a huge thing. It seems subtle. It seems like nothing, but it's very important, especially with girls that aren't actively participating and like naturally doing that. I call that shit out because if I don't call it out, it just kind of shows her it's okay for her to be over there. And it's really not okay. If I'm out on a date with you, I, I, I don't want that. I want you fucking next to me. I want you next to me. And I'll straight up tell that to the girl. Yeah, no, I want you next to me. What do you mean? Yeah, no, it's, it's fucking cold in here. I want some body heat. Help me out. Be a good host. Okay. That's the vibe. It's not even about the words that I said, but notice how I had this playful delivery. Like I found some bullshit excuse to justify why I want her next to me. That's not the truth. It's not that it's not that it's cold in here and body heat's the most efficient way for me to warm up. That's not what it is, you know? It's just it's this playful demeanor of, look, I want you close to me. Okay? And there's no shame in doing that, dude. It's it's a great fucking thing. But again, it's verbalizing my intent of like, look, I ha- I'm not apologetic for being attracted to you and I want you sitting close to me and I want to kiss you. I don't say those things, but my actions are conveying, I like you, I'm attracted to you, I want to kiss you, I will fuck you. I'm not apologetic about any of that, and I'm not going to make you uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable about any of those things either, okay? That's what's all sub-communicated. So we're sitting on the couch, um, and we're just vibing, get to know you. I, show, I, talk, I talked a lot about my past. I talked a lot about um, insecurities of mine growing up, things I'm into as well as hers, you know, we're, we're talking back and forth. I'm just getting to know the girl while joking every so often. I'm sprinkling in a little bit of like intent lightly, you know, a couple, two hours goes by. We had like another glass or two of wine. We smoked some hookah. And then at some point we got up, we were back in the kitchen. We were getting close. And at, at some point she was at the, at the sink, like doing something by the sink. And I remember at that point we had already been close to each other. So it wasn't that crazy for me to just go up behind her and I was like, if she's at the sink washing dishes and stuff, I was like right behind her with, and then I put my arms around her. I started talking into her ear while my arms are like around her and my body's pressed up against hers from behind. And I was talking to her, joking about whatever the fuck we were talking about. But it's a nice little move to kind of increase the escalation again, just a little bit, just a little bit. I didn't fucking go in and like start making out with her neck and start fucking trying to finger her from behind. I didn't do anything like that. I just smoothly, confidently went up while we were still talking. I'm behind her. I started talking into her ear and I kind of just started talking kind of like this and I started laughing. It was just kind of a good vibe. And then maybe, I think maybe with my one hand, I probably ran it up the top of her back and just touched her hair just a little bit. She was into it. I moved in just a little bit, kiss on the cheek, and then I broke it off. I pushed away and then I spun off and I kept the conversation going. Okay. Nice little move to kind of incorporate in there smooth not over the top not conveying too too much but you know it making my presence known in that moment okay so i did that i pulled back i'm still in the kitchen i'm joking with her about something we go back into the living room and she has this little massage chair it's like a it's like a recliner chair that you sit on that just massages you so i sat down on it not even knowing it was a massage chair but i sat down on it and she comes over with the remote and she's like yeah did you know this is a massage chair and she turns it on so I'm sitting there, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, it actually did feel really good. I sat on it for a little bit, and then she went out of her way to, like, sit on top of me while I was on the chair, which was cool. Um, that was her first actual, what's the word? That was the first time she actually, like, actively participated in the escalation. Up until that point, she had been kind of just following my lead, so to speak. You know, there was never any resistance, and I was actively guiding her. But this was the first move that she did where I was like, cool. She's kind of like, you know, a little, I took a little mental note in that moment. I was like, okay, cool. Like she went out of her way and like actually just like sat on my lap, which is awesome. You know, she sat there for a little bit. We just talked. But again, guys, the only reason she did that was because of all those little moves I had already made. And every time I was escalating, I was the one that broke it off. 
if I didn't do any of that, she wouldn't have just came and sat on my lap because then she would have felt like I may have judged her for it. But by doing all these little escalations, pulling away, making her feel comfortable, making her feel like the escalation's not a big deal, guiding her through all of those other escalations and showing her there's no judgment for doing any of those things, it finally gives her enough comfort with me to get to the point where she can come over and sit on my lap, okay? Which is a great, great sign. So she, she did that. She got up at some point. Then she sat at the edge of the couch. And then I got up and I went over near her and we started talking and we got in close. And then I literally just got in closer and closer and we just started making out. We made out for like, I don't know, seven seconds, <laughs> like something like that. You know, it wasn't like crazy over the top. It was the first kiss, nice first kiss, five, seven seconds. And I was, I was actually getting pretty hard at that moment. I almost just went and put her hand on my dick. And in hindsight, I'm, I kept thinking about this afterwards. I was like, I wonder if I should have just went for it right then and there, but I didn't. I probably, in hindsight, if I could do it again, I would have. I actually would have. Even though it's very quick, it's okay. You just calibrate in the moment. It, it, you know, if, if the girl's, if you're back at her house and she's sitting on me and we've been physical and we're like four hours into the date and there's a little bit of wine involved and she's making out with me, it's okay if I just move her hand there. If I see that there's resistance, I'll move it away before she even touches it. You know, I have like a full two, I probably have like a full second to determine if there's going to be resistance. You know what I'm saying? If her hand's here and I need to move her hand to here, I'll know if there's resistance before she actually gets to my dick. You get what I'm saying? So like resistance, move my hand up her arm. No resistance, slow, go even slower as we get really close. And no resistance, then I'll just put her hand on my dick. Okay? I didn't do it though in that moment. In hindsight, I probably should have. But it didn't really matter. We kissed. I pulled away. We kept vibing. Now we sat back down on the couch. And at this point, she came up and like huddled up on my shoulder and we got really close to me. And then the vibe changed. That's what I'm saying, guys. You don't want to wait until the end of the fucking date to, um, you don't want to wait until the end of the date to, to start going for the kiss. If, it's almost like you wait too long and the girl starts categorizing you a certain way. It's almost like you missed your window. And there's been several dates that I went on where I never made the fucking move and it costed me. It costed me a lot. Um, so escalate early, escalate often, and always be kind of baby stepping towards the close. I'll, I'll wrap up this date for you, by the way, just to tell you how, how it ended up. We went back onto the couch. So we kissed a little bit. We went back onto the couch and then... Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something. If you want more of this type of content or if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, be sure to check out my Patreon. And until next time, Coach Kyle, signing out.